said thank you. We dare not ask for anything right now. Before we just tell you thank you. Thank you, sir. that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for how you kept us all day long. Thank you for how you blessed us on last evening, yeah. how you poured out upon us. Yeah. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, because we know you're going to do it again tonight. Don't let us leave here the way we came. In Jesus' name. to make it. We thank you God for this men's conference and how if the brothers here, not only the brothers, but all of our sisters as well and how you have enhanced our lives. We know that something is going to be said tonight. There's going to be a further enhancement for us. Forgive us of our sin to right out our transgressions. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up what we're torn down. Now God, don't let us go any further tonight than you command us to. We bind the devil and we cast him. We cast him out in the name of Jesus. And we crucify ourselves. We want the Holy Ghost. And they said, let the Holy Ghost have free course. Move in the midst of your people tonight. As you bring to us what thus says the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And every glad heart said, Thank God. Clap those hands vigorously. Like you got the devil in between. And just thank God. Hey! Thank God! Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you,
the affirmation of faith. We affirm our faith to be in the Bible, congregation. We affirm our faith in God. Faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in repentance. We affirm our faith in salvation. Our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in sanctification. Give God a hand praise. You may take your seat. We do thank God for the entrance of the presiding president of this jurisdiction, Bishop Frank Anderson. I thank God for Bishop Hugo, Bishop Strickland, Second Administrator, Assistant Williams. We thank God for the entire cabinet of administrative assistants and superintendents. Thank God for Mother, Mother Watkins. Amen. 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 The Bible says that the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. And yeah. Tonight, we are going to be blessed to hear from our leader. Yeah. Now, last night, we heard from Pastor Kelly, and Pastor Kelly did a wonderful job. Yeah. Amen. We, we will hear from Bishop Hines on tomorrow night, and I'm quite sure he will do a wonderful job. But on tonight, on tonight. somebody help me say tonight. tonight. Tonight we're going to hear from our leader. Yeah. Uh, I know the mic is working. I said on tonight we're going to hear from our leader. I want to let you know that there are many bishops out there, many leaders across this nation. But we need to hear a word from our leader. And so, and, and I, I, I told him earlier, he, he's much better than me because uh, this is their wedding anniversary. 59 years of being married. And they are truly dedicated to be here tonight to have him to preach and minister the word. See, some of y'all are real deep, so I'm, I'm going to let y'all have that. Y'all are real deep. Y'all don't have to be deep. Come on. It's all right. You can laugh. You can laugh. But what I'm trying to say is, it's their wedding anniversary. And it's their wedding anniversary. Y'all still deep. It's their wedding anniversary. And they are here with us on tonight. So brothers and sisters, after we hear a song from the choir, the next voice you will hear will be of that of our leader, none yes. other than Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr. And we ask that after the choir sings that you would stand and let us be prepared to hear a word from the Lord. Come on, somebody help me say thank God for Bishop Anderson. Come on, put those hands together all over the building. Amen, amen. obedient to our bishop and my pastor, amen, and it's not the choir, it's Brother Andre Criswell, is that alright? It's not about me. Oh, how well do I remember how 
how I down today.
us from strength to strength and glory to glory. Be the God of our lives. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Touch mother, daughter, father, son. Touch the mean man in the name of Jesus. Oh God, set us on a course of righteousness. Oh God, we realize tonight that without you we can't do nothing. But with you we can do all things. And for that God we thank you now. Give us what to say in these fleeting moments. Thank you for the word that have been spoken already on tonight. And I pray God that you let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And every word that I utter, I want you to rescue them and make them mine. Hide me behind the cross that men will see thee and glorify the Father. It is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray, thank God. Amen. I want you to lift your hand as high as you can. Let's bombard heaven with praise. With a shout now. Come on. Let's, let's bombard. Come on right now. With a voice of triumph.
here, and I'm not going to be up here very long. I gave, I told Elder Gilmore he was doing such a wonderful job. But one of the things that we got to know, Brother Preachers, amen, sometimes when you're on, if a word is being come forth, you got to know how to let it go. Amen. Because there are times that God says things that the person who might be on the preach, he might have a word, but not the word that God wants for that time. And you got to realize that. And then the Bible said, as many that are led by the they are how many sons of God do we really have? We have a lot of people in the pool, people, but are they sons of God? Amen. So I praise God. God bless you, Pastor Hicks, Sister Hicks. Thank you both for your testimony. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless us, Anderson. Lord, amen, for her testimony, for her greetings. Praise the Lord. Brother Watkins, God bless you. Praise the Lord. All the bishop's wives and the ladies and all of you, chairman's wives and all of you, praise the Lord. And Bishop Rudolph and Bishop Strickland, praise the Lord. And to all of these very fine superintendents, pastors, and look at the person next to you and say he's honoring you too. <laughs> Amen. 59 years ago, on the Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock, <laughs> Sister Anderson and I stood before a preacher named Huff. And uh, we said, I do. we do, we did, and we do. <laughs> 59 years. And we have been girlfriend, boyfriend since November the 11th, 1961, about 12, 15. So that should be somewhere around 61 years. Amen. So we thank God. We have one son, Elder Jeff. Praise the Lord of you. Amen. He's a dear son. And we thank God for him. He helps me out so much as I get in my older years. Amen. And we thank God for his children that he has. Praise the Lord, and he's a grandfather, three times. So that makes me great, me and Sister Anderson, great grandparents. So we thank God. Now, now listen, um, I, was, I was listening to the word coming from Elder Gilmore. People of God, God is looking for a right now people. God is looking for a right now saint. Yes. And then I ask the question, are you living in the past? Or are you living in the present? So many of us, the Lord gave me a message one day, it's time to leave the burning bush. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes we're caught up on our beginning until we can't see the now. There's so much going on in the now that we are not prepared for. The people that I prepared for, this is the month I've been preaching 60 years. The people that we prepared for 60 years ago, they're no more. Amen. They don't take the word like the people back then took the word. Amen. 
there's more questions asked after messages. <laughs> when you counsel, excuse me, when you counsel people, they ask why. And I, my thing is this: Why did you come to me? Why did you come to me if you're not going to listen? And if you don't want to hear truth, go down to where they got a shingle out there that's, that they say that they are a psychiatrist and let them talk to you because you're not going to listen to me. Sister Anderson used to tell me, said, uh, you know, said, uh, you, know, you talk to everybody, but uh, you don't talk to me. I said, well, they listen. <laughs> she want to talk more than I talk. <laughs> so when you go to your pastor, listen, when you go to your pastor, uh, don't waste this time. <laughs> Don't waste this time. I told, I told, uh, told the saints way back when I started office hours years ago. I said I'm, I'm going to be starting office hours, and, and I gave him my office hours. And one of the brothers came by, and I, I said, "Yes, sir." He said, uh, "I just come by to kill some time. I suppose to place that." We ain't killing nothing up in here. Today. <laughs> God is looking for faithful, consistent, courageous, and determined folk. Would you ask your neighbor, are you faithful? Are you consistent? Are you courageous? Are you determined? God has issued the call for godly men. He's looking for men who will take up the cross and follow him. Men who will take a stand for what is right. Men who will invest their lives in something that will last for generations to come. Proverbs 27 and 17 to go with the scripture that we read. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. Look at somebody tell them, said the preacher said spirit to spirit. This is a men's meeting, and I thank God for our chairman, Elder Robert Jones. Yeah. Come on, clap your hands. We thought about that very something. But he has taken the helm of his brotherhood department, and he works hard, and he thinks, he thinks, he thinks, and he thinks. Many times when we're driving, and, uh, I'm over there sleeping, and, uh, and he said, well, uh, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and he's always, and some of the things that you think that he's doing, you think that somebody, that I'm telling him to do it, it's, I, when I became bishop, when I became the bishop, uh, when I told him that he needed to be with me, he was at another church. I said, you need to be with me. He's already let me go back and tell him that I ain't coming back no more. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, when I was consecrated, when I came back from Memphis, when the meeting was over, there was a sign in my parking spot with the seal of the bishop on it that said, Bishop Frank, I didn't tell him to do that. I went down in my office. The plaques have been changed over the door that said Bishop Anderson. When I walked inside the door on the desk, it was it, when I left. It said Superintendent Anderson, but he had changed it. Had it changed to say Bishop, and I didn't tell it. A lot of things that he just think like that. God bless you, Mother Jones, for Amen for raising such a son. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And he keep that phone 
All you brothers, listen. Amen. He's opened up this jurisdiction to all of the men and men are perfecting men. Men are doing things that they've never done. You all have got your hands up. And we thank God for him. Thank God, thank God for him and how he's putting these different ones on program. And when you look at the program and it looks like it's like that, he said, it's not going to take that long. So we're going to try to have the preachers up at 9 o'clock and praise God. And just about at 9 o'clock each night, uh, we were up maybe 10 minutes after 9. So God bless you. He said he wanted to get out. He tried to have us out around 10 o'clock. And uh, in that I came, you know, to give more some of my time. I don't have much. <laughs> While men in our society seem more confused, more irresponsible, and more ungodly than ever, God is raising up a righteous alternative. Thousands of men are coming together and what is being heralded a sovereign move of God called men perfecting men. All right. All right. The group name refers to men who makes a commitment to pray, study God's word, love their family, and covenant with each other. Yes. Ephesians 4 and 24 said, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's time for us as men to make a spiritual declaration and tell somebody that I declare and I decree that there is a new man coming out of me. Can you say that there is a new man coming out of me? The old man is dead. So what's happening? There, there's something that look at somebody and tell them, I'm getting better. Getting better. Saying, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Tell them, I'm doing better. I'm doing and better. tell them, I'm on my way to best. Praise the Lord. I got to be better than what I am now. It's time for us now. There's a lot of things in our past as men. Amen. There's a lot of things in our past that we need, praise the Lord, stop letting it pull us back. There are things in your past that you can't do nothing about. The only person that can do anything with your past is Jesus. Because the Bible says that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And since he's the God of yesterday, he's the only one that can step back into your past and eulogize your past. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Anderson said, let it go. There are men that love God, they love their family, they love their church, but they're struggling with the pains of yesterday. The pains of the past, if not dealt with, will hinder you from maximizing your potential. Amen. There's no medicine, there's no pill, there's no psychological counseling that can be taken into your yesterday to get rid of your pain. We are taking pills to try to, dis to destroy our past. We're putting band-aids on cancer. Right, right, right. We're trying to cover up some stuff that it takes God to get rid of. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Lord. Am I saying anything? Yes. Would you tell somebody to let God do it? Yes. Jesus can pronounce the benediction on it. Yes. But you got to let him have it. Here's yes. the thing. We are broken vessels. We are broken pieces. And the only way that we can get back together, we have to give ourselves to God. And then if he's going to put us back together, we have to give him all the pieces. Thank you, Lord. The stuff that we're trying to hide, you got to give it to God. 
if you're going to get back to wholeness. The Master Lord help us. Second oh, yeah. Corinthians 5 7. He said, If any man yeah. be in Christ Jesus, yeah. what is he? Yeah. He's a new, come on, new creature. Yeah. New creature. What happened? Oh. Old things. What, what's yeah. happened? Yeah. Passed away. What? Oh. Behold, all things yeah. become new. Yeah. Amen. Everything in our future ought to be new. Yeah. Everything in our present should be new. Yeah. Am I right about that? Yeah. Oh, Become new. The old you is gone. Stop dragging up your past. Stop dragging it up. Stop hanging around folk that don't matter. I remember when you used to do this. Tell them it's not what I used to do. It's not what I used to be. It's what I am now. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm Holy Ghost sealed, and I'm fine baptized. That's who I am. Tell somebody, that's who I am. If you want to know who I am, that's who I am. I'm saved, I'm sanctified. And Brother Bobby, yes, I speak in tongues. That's the thing that's happening. Men don't just come to church. Dress up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dressing up, looking good, but praise the Lord, but you got a raggedy life. Look at somebody and tell them, let's be real. I'm going to say it again, let's be real. And if you need help, get help. Stop burying yourself in your problem. If you need help, get help. And the thing, all of us, we are machos. But you need a covering. You need a covering. You need somebody more than your wife. You need a man that Think like a man. You need a man that have problems like a man have problems that you can talk to. All right. Am I saying anything? And you got to do it spirit to spirit, man to man. The reason why a lot of us in problem in trouble because we don't have nobody that we trust. Because if I tell you something, on, it'll be on Facebook. Yeah. All right. So then therefore we're afraid to say anything to anybody. So we go home with pain. Oh, we go home hurting. Men and being men are setting up in church, they're hurting. Oh. That men in the pulpit, they're hurting. Because they have nobody that they can go to. And talk to them. So then we hurt. And then when you hurt, you hurt other people. There you go. Amen. We hurt other people. And you'd be surprised how many men in the pulpit are hurting. All right. Because they have nobody to unload on. And we say, well, we go to Jesus. Amen. But do we really? Do we really go to him? You need relationship with a brother. Humans. <laughs> but too many men have diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> Talk. And so therefore we're friends. It's hard to get a real friend. Because even then you're afraid to talk to them because you might break up. And if you break up, they're going to 
tell the stuff that you told them in secret. All right. Somebody say, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. But I want to I say this to you right now. All of you that have a problem, God is pronouncing the benediction over your yesterday. All right. God is saying it's over. God is saying it's over. But then you got to walk like it's over. You got to talk like it's over. You got to believe it's over. And you got to stop dragging it up. All right. All right, all right. Look at somebody just to get rid of it. Come on, just get rid of it. And once you get rid of it, walk away from it. Walk in a new path. Walk in a new avenue. Walk in a new way. Because the old man is dead. Yes, All right. So, yes, and then after I pronounce the benediction of my yesterday, I become a vessel of honor. Yes. Look at somebody else. I'm becoming a vessel of honor. Yes. Come on, say it. I'm becoming a vessel of honor. Yes. In a society where there are so many things that are craving for the attention of men. It is essential that men understand the importance of relinquishing ownership of the old man in exchange for the newness that Christ <laughs> seeks to give him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise be God. Yeah. And I like the scripture where it says, stop putting new wine in old walls. Stop putting the new in the old the Bible said if you put new wine in the bottle, it's going to burst. It's a whole lot of you, you're breaking in pieces. Because you say you're this, you're saved. And you're trying to put this spirit into the old man. And it will not work. It will not work. You cannot, you cannot put Jesus in the old man and still remain the old man. Because once he comes, once he comes in, the old man vacates the premises, and somebody said, "How do you live this life? I can't do it, but God can." Come on, tell somebody, God can. God can live it in me because He changed me. Save. I was aroused about and all of that. And, and uh, my friends asked me, said, uh, you, you, how you going to do that? How you going to live that life? How you going to stop smoking? How you going to stop drinking? How you going to stop cursing? How you going to stop doing all those things? And I said, it's going to take God to do it. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, hey, hey, oh, no. see and heed. That's when he said, it's no more I. It's no more Frank Anderson. It's the Christ that lives inside of me. And he can do that. He can live this. He can stop it. Somebody shout glory. Said, how can you do that? And then they said, you can't drink no more. They said, you can't smoke no more. You can't go to the clubs no more. Amen. And I said, I said, uh, and I just got, I just got a righteous indignation. I said, I can go if I want. I can drink if I want. I can smoke if I want to. But God took the want to away. And I don't want to. When he comes in, amen, he takes the want to away. And he fills your life with goodness. He fills your life with gladness. He fills your life with peace. And then you say, I can. I can. I'm like a put put train. I think I can. 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 I can make it. Come on, tell God, thank you, somebody. Tell him, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory to Jesus. 
Romans 12 and 2 told us, brothers, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You, you, you trying to change where you go. You've been trying to change what you do. The only way that you're going to stop going and stop doing, you got to change your mind. You got to have a new way of thinking. If you have a new way of walking, you got to have a new way of thinking. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what that is good and perfect and acceptable, perfect will of God. You got to do it. You got to change your mind. And you cannot, brother, and you cannot, amen, do the things you used to do. Some of you still drinking. I'll ask the person, all the drinkers stand up, you know. I don't think nobody will stand up. But, but listen, if it's wrong, then don't do it. You cannot, listen, you cannot, you cannot substitute wrong for wrong. All right. Yeah. They got all this stuff out there. You, you hear me say it a lot lately, near beer. Near beer. It just doesn't have the alcohol, but it tastes like beer. It's still beer. It's just near alcohol. Amen. Then the wine cooler. Ain't nothing wrong with Moke and David wine. Talk, Bishop! Oh! It's got alcohol in it. Oh! Y'all ain't gonna like this. Some, some of you probably serve it for communion. Moke and David wine for communion. Jesus said, don't look up on the wine when it's strong in the cup. All right. Which means when it's fermented. All right. He said, when it start moving. All right. Make your eyes red. Bite it like a an and sting it like a serpent. All right. And it make your eyes red. Well. Make it chase after strange women. All right. Amen. A drunk man, everybody look pretty to him. Somebody <laughs> 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 tree. Yes, Tell the Lord, thank you, somebody. Thank you, somebody. Tell us to give it up. Yeah. Come on, say, give it up. Yeah. Come on, say it again, give it up. Yeah. Amen. It is essential that every Man, Christian man, sanctified man, understand that there is power made available to him. Talk about it. This power is reserved to the man that's indwelled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Listen, brothers, this is a man conference. Don't stop until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't settle for just an F E E L I N G. Get a F I L L I N G. Get filled with it. You can get a feeling anytime you want to. I thank God, praise the Lord. Acts 1 and 8 tell us. Amen. That you receive power. After. Where is that word? After. Underline the word after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Not before. After the Holy Ghost come. And then you shall be. Unto me. Amen. And listen, as I get ready to come to a close, listen. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 said, For God has not given us spirit of fear, but of power, power, love, and sound mind. Thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Do I have anybody here? Listen, I, I, I knew way back then it had to be more than what I felt when I got saved to keep me. I knew it had to be more than jumping around the floor that's going to keep me. It was all right, Ellen Miller, it was all right when I was around the saints. But I had to go home. I had to go home I had to face the man in the mirror. And the man in the mirror is me. What's going to keep me from, you telling me, we telling folk we don't drink. But how are we going to help them? We tell them that we don't smoke. We're not going to throw them out. But you got to work with them. This is a hospital for sinners. But we don't made it a social club for saints. All right. Don't 
remember even what we looked like. But the man in the mirror, if he'd been changed by God, you know what he looks like. Because you don't look like the old man. You're the new man in Christ Jesus. And I thank God tonight, people, for what the Lord is doing for you. Would you tell your name, I thank God for what he's doing for you?
has. Can you say he's been the of my heart be acceptable unto you. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. Give honor to God, Pastor Rogers and First Lady in their absence. Mother Rogers is always a pleasure to be here. My First Lady, Mother Dandra. You can always tell how much God cares about a people by how he, uh, who he sends to them as a leader. God must care a lot about Greater New Valley. Only God knows how far we will go under the leadership of this preacher. Amen. Now I'm not going to take up a lot of time because if you're like most of us, we've had a busy week. Amen. A real busy week. Amen. So let me dispense with the preamble of my nature and get about the business of preaching the word of God. Romans 8, chapter the 6th verse, for say, to be carnal man is death, but to be spiritual man is life and peace. Proverbs 12, chapter in the 2nd and 3rd verse says, a man, a good man, obtains favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will be condemned, and a man shall not be established by weakness. But the roots of the righteous shall not be moved. Every once in a while, every once in a while, the world gets to a point where God has to make a few changes. Every once in a while, God, while God was so storm to regulate the morals and spiritual experiences of life, when the evil becomes too prevalent, when the bad outweighs the good, when Satan gets a foothold where his foot doesn't belong, when the evil majority becomes so much greater than the godly minority, the evil reaches our social and religious institutions, then God has a way of saying to his people, step back and let me regulate. If this was not true, Noah would have never built the ark and that would have never been a flood. Solomon and Gomai would still be standing. There would be no Red Sea. The Hebrew boys would have died in the furnace. Goliath would have won the fight. There would be no resurrection. The Christian church would still be persecuted. Mandela would have died in jail. And Obama would have never became president. But God makes periodic visits. He always intercedes when evil has lasted too long. And after you pray and preach, your next commandment is to wait. The old prophets were like spiritual weather men. Their job was not to forecast bad and good weather, but to warn you when the actions, when your actions were offensive to God. They were moral storm watchers. 
They did not let the pressures of society make them social servants. They were, they would not be caught up in the politics of this country. They would be less concerned and there would be less tragedy here. If there was less preaching from our own theology and more storm warnings, you do people a disservice when you give them lies to see them fear. When they need storm warnings. If somebody would say, the wages of sin is death. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also do. I want to continue to remind God's people of his promise in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 of my people, not the world, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. If you will go with me to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, the 5th to the 6th verse, I will read to you from the words of the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven and ruleth thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thy hands is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand it. I want to talk about prayer. I want to talk about prayer because prayer is important to life. If you want to be all God wants you to be, if you want to see God's hand move in your life, you've got to be a person of prayer. Unfortunately, uh, the unfortunate thing is that most of us only decide to pray when we find ourselves in trouble. I want to talk about prayer because I've listened to people pray. And I have discovered that people pray in account. Whatever they decide to say. Amen. I know we live in a generation where people feel that they can do anything. Uh -huh. And they don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Amen. But God don't believe in anything. Amen. And the reality is that anything won't work. Amen. There are some processes that have to be followed. And if you eliminate the process, what you get is what's going on now in this society, chaos. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he gets old, he will not depart from you. There's also a scripture, if you don't know it, that says, beat him and he will not die. There's a scripture that says, spread a rod and spoil the child. But we have developed a society who wipes laws that are conflict to God's word. And then they try to create an environment where you have to accept their ideals and concepts. Or they create problems for you. So that's the reason we come to a point where God has decided, I'm going to step in. A year or so ago, I said that if you look at all the chaos that's going on in this world, if you subtract all the chaos that's organized by man and just look at what's going on, you have fires, 
burning in the northwest. You have flooding in the southeast. Back then we had hurricanes lined up in the Atlantic. We had people dying by the thousands every day. That's if you subtract all the chaos that was going on in this country by man. Then for the last two and a half years, we've been dealing with a virus. But you know, every time you look at these situations, if you look at the insurance companies, they have it right. They, they call it an act of God. But we try to play it off and, and we, we want to get back to things as usual. I used to tell my wife that God destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah because of the evil that was going on there. And if God doesn't do something in this country, he'd have to repent for what he did to Solomon and Gomorrah. And the Bible tells me God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. The Bible tells me God is light and there is no darkness in him. You say you have fellowship with God and you walk in darkness, you lie. That's the word. So I don't care what's going on in this world. I don't know what the future holds, but I can tell you who holds the future. Oh, bless his name. I'm not a social servant. I live by the word. I wake up with the word. My wife said I preach all the time. Preaching and praying. But you know I found out something about the word. I used to get a little frustrated about what was going on. But the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace and he keep your mind on oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, that's the word. You see, sometimes you have to hide that word in your heart. Because sometimes you're going to have a Bible. But I heard Paul, I think, what did he say? I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. Given unto me by the affection and workings of his power. I who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ and make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which has been hidden in God who created all things. Hallelujah. If, I, if you stay in the word, if you stay in the word, the Bible says, study to show thyself approval unto God, a workman that need not error, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, bless his name. Every once in a while, I just have to call the name Jesus. People ignore the fact that throughout the Bible, throughout Scripture, God gives them patterns of prayer. The Bible from generation, from Genesis to Revelations, has patterns of prayer. When the disciples saw all the miracles that Jesus performed and all the things he could do, the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. I know some of you don't think God cares how you pray. That's your theology. The Bible is filled with stories and examples, and these examples were written for your example. To show you how to pray. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter says, there is a prayer that produces a phenomenal result. And let me take you to the theater of your mind, the stage of your imagination, and tell you the story and the situation that Jehoshaphat was in and the results of the prayer he prayed. The Ammon and Moab 
and the people of Mount Seir combined their armies to attack King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. The word Judah means praise. Now don't be surprised when people start talking about you. The devil don't like it when you are praising God. No, 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 no. Jehoshaphat became king of Judah at the age of 35 and he was going to reign for 25 years. He finds himself in a situation where three nations have come together to attack Judah. And he sets himself to seek the Lord. And he called a fast throughout Judah. In 2 Chronicles 20, chapter 22 and 24, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. And when which they came against, when they came against of Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir and utterly slayed and destroyed them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Mount Seir, everyone helped to destroy each other. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Let me put it to you. The people who planned to hurt Judah destroyed each other. Let me explain this to you. God set an ambush and they started attacking each other. And they attacked each other until they were all dead. Now, what is the significance of that to you today? There are some people who have plotted to get you fired. To get you hurt. But we serve a God that instead of you getting fired, they got fired. This is how powerful God is in 2 Chronicles 20, 24, 25. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth. And none escaped. And when Judah and Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoils of them, they found among them an abundance of riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off from. Then they carried away, and there were so much welfare, it took them three days. The carrot is full. It was just that much. This is how powerful the prayer was. If you go with me to 2 Chronicles 20 and 14, and the son of Asher came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou king Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. You need to be careful about messing around with God's people. The Bible says you need to be turning to hell in all nations that can be God. Somebody say, oh, God don't want you to be afraid of him. He just wants you to respect him. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And he says it is a fear of the thing to fall into the hands of a living God. This 
the God that you're just supposed to respect. You know that Moses married a dark-skinned woman, and his sister complained about it, and God, he cursed her with leprosy. That was just for putting out negative thoughts about her brother's wife. Elijah left a city and there were 60 kids that was calling them bald headed and God sent Chile out of the woods and killed all 60 kids. That was just for calling one of his people a bald head. So when somebody tells you that God does not mean for you to fear him, that's not my anointing. Do my son come on. That's the word. Oh, bless his name. I don't know what you're going through. But you need to be careful about messing with God's people. People try to bring this mess in the church. The Bible says, on this rock I build my church and the bell gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is God's house. Okay? Don't be afraid. I don't want you to be aware of I don't know who this message is for. But God is dropping this into somebody's spirit. God is saying the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. So don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. He's already got it mapped out. He's already got it under control. He's already determined what's going to happen to the people trying to hurt you. Tell somebody the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. You can stop tripping. Stop being nervous and scared and anxious. It's not your battle. It's the Lord's. It's not for you to worry about. You're not going to have to do anything. You're not going to have to call anybody. You're not going to have to pee nobody off. You're not going to have to cuss nobody out. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Somebody is getting free right now. The devil is trying to take you out. Somebody's burden is being lifted. Somebody's got to shout down in their spirit. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. My goal today is to show you how First, we need to recognize God. Amen. When you go to God, you need to recognize who He is. Amen. You put, God put Job in a situation where nobody could help him. So when he was delivered, only God got the credit. Somebody here has been in a situation and nobody could get them out but the Lord. And nobody got them out but the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Only God alone. Nobody else. When you go to God, recognize his power. Don't tell him about what people have done. Can't stop God. No, I'm tired of people talking about the devil this and the devil that. People are doing and giving me the blues and all kinds of stuff. Leave them alone. They are not God. Let's start talking about God. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with 
God and the Word was God and everything that was made was made by Him. Now, don't you think it's unusual that two and a half years ago, before that time period, that was not fires in the north, floods in the east, hurricanes lining up, people dying by the thousands. All that wasn't going on. But all of a sudden, you know, whenever God is angry, if you go to the children of Israel, when he got angry at Pharaoh about what was going on, when God got dissatisfied with the people, one of the things he do is send them a terrible ruler. And then he start dropping plagues on them. about the saints, he says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me tell you this little story. Five men went for a job for Cody. And they all went to the office and they stood there and they sit, sit for 15 minutes and 30 minutes and a little longer. And then one of the candidates got up and went into the interviewer's office. And he came back out five minutes later and said, you all can go home now. I have the job. Uh. And everybody, the four other interview the candidates that were waiting on the interview got upset and they said, we need to see a supervisor. This is not fair. This is not right. We're going to do something about this. And he said, wait a minute. Let me tell you what happened. I was sitting here with you like you and I heard something knocking. And he said, I thought, you know, it could have been the heat. But I kept listening and I found out it was a Morris Code. Okay. And the Morris Code said, if you understand this message, you have the job. You can come away. There's a lot of folk here that came to church. And they're going to leave here the way they came. But there's a few folk here. There's a few folk here. Maybe one or two. And they're going to hear the word of God. John 10th chapter and the fifth verse said, my sheep know my voice. Somebody is going to leave here better than how they came. Are you that one? Flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m.